Hi, we're Matt and Cheryl, and we are back with more tips on the best of the West. We want to help you plan an amazing trip to the West, and today we want to talk to you about some common mistakes that can happen when you visit Capitol Reef National Park in Utah. Okay, so the first thing is only spending a couple of hours in Capitol Reef. So a lot of people are going to hit this on their way from Arches National Park over to Bryce Canyon National Park or vice versa. So, so it sits in between these two parks. So a lot of people will hit this just on the way and they might just drive, make that full drive in one day and then just stop in Capitol Reef just so they can kind of say they did it. And we understand that. We like to see as much as we can when we're on a vacation. We know that a lot of you are coming out here and you're hitting like five or six national parks at one time. We've talked to you and we know some of the road trips that you're doing, they are incredible road trips. And we're not here to tell you to take away too much time from places like Zion and Bryce to spend more time in Capitol Reef. But if you only spend an hour or two at Capitol Reef, you're kind of missing out on, on some of the, the coolness of what the park has to offer. Yeah, you want time to get some pie, do a drive, do a hike, and experience just what there is to offer. And you really can't do that in two hours. Yeah. Okay. Number two is to lower your expectations just a little bit. Capitol Reef is not quite the stunner that Zion or Arches are in Utah, but that doesn't mean it's not beautiful. You're still going to see the towering red rock and the interesting geological formations. It is beautiful. And it does have something that not any of the other parks have, which is fruit orchards. But it, if you just compare it straight to one of those other national parks, you might be like, oh, it wasn't that great. But Capitol Reef is beautiful and amazing, and it's huge and so much variety. So I guess that's our number two tip is to... Yeah, just we say lower your expectations only because uh, you, know, you don't want to be underwhelmed like you're going to uh, a place like Zion. However, I would say this, uh, even though it's not Zion, at least you're able to stay there and relax there next to those canyon walls. So the canyon walls aren't as, aren't as high and as impressive as Zion, but they are still really cool. And you're right there with the canyon walls, eating a picnic or camping or something like that, which you're not really able to do at a place like Zion or even Bryce. Actually. Yeah, so. you get quite a bit of solitude at Capitol Reef, which is so enjoyable. The next thing has to do with fruit. So Cheryl mentioned there's fruit orchards there. So this is uh, not not getting pie, okay? They serve pie at the Gifford House. You wanna stop in and pick up a little little pie. They're kinda, kinda small. They're actually baked down the road at the Broken Spur, and then they're brought into the Gifford House each day, and they sell like, how many pies? 70,000 70, pies a year. Yeah, per year. And then, and then there's all these fruit orchards, and there you pick it. Um, well, you have to make sure you're looking for the signs, but the signs will say which ones you can pick. But uh, yeah, you want to make sure to, to get some pie and to pick some fruit when it's in season. Yeah, so just, you know, when you're, if you're planning a trip and you have some flexibility, check out their website, see what's going on. You know, we're, I'm a little sad. We went there spring break, so the first week in April for us. And I think if we would have been there three weeks later, we would have seen these orchards in full bloom mm -hmm. with the flowers. We saw a few little buds, but not the full bloom. So. Um, Capitol mm -hmm. Reef, you really can, you know, be there when it's time to pick pears or when the fruit trees are in bloom, but absolutely do not miss the opportunity to buy some pie at the Gifford House. We might have to drive down there again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, our next one is not staying in Fruta, if you can. Fruta is the orchard area in the middle of Capitol Reef. It's the only campground to stay. And the reason why I feel so strongly about this is it is just relaxing to stay in Fruta. You are not dealing with crowds, traffic. You're not having to drive in and out of the park. Um, it's not like the roads are crazy or anything in Capitol Reef, but there really is one main road that drives through the park that can get a little backed up from Torrey, if, especially if there's construction going on. But if you're staying in Fruta, I mean, you hear plenty of birds chirping. You're right next to a ranch with horses on it, middle of the, the fruit trees. There's two accessible hiking trails right from the campground. So if you um, really want a relaxing vacation and don't mind camping, stay in Fruta. Okay, the next thing is, this is really important, so pay attention here, not packing a lunch. Okay, so there's nowhere to eat in the park, and really there's not a close, close gateway town right next to the park like there is most national parks. So the city of Torrey is 10 miles away, which isn't so bad unless you were 
starving and you were still wanting to do more things in the park and you had to drive 10, really 20 miles round trip out of your way to go get lunch. So we recommend packing a picnic lunch for your day in Capitol Reef. And then also make sure to bring water because there wasn't a, a lot of water spigots around or yeah. was there? You don't, you don't need to bring water into the park, but bring like a large enough container that will last you for a few hours because the only places to get water are the picnic areas, the visitor center and the campground. Most of the trailheads, well actually none of the trailheads for the hikes have water at them. So, mm -hmm. you know, like once you're out and about, or if you go on some of those big drives that there are in the park, there's no water. So, I mean, your little, your little water bottle isn't going to cut it. You need like a jug. Yeah. We'll cover the big drives in another video that you do want mm -hmm. to be aware of if you're going to have a little bit more time there at Capitol Reef because there's some pretty cool drives there. But, but yeah, that's true. You're going to be way off the grid. Um, you're already kind of a ways off the grid just being at Capitol Reef actually because it's so far out there. But, but yeah, you do need to be prepared. And then Packing a picnic is really, you're gonna be grateful that you did that. Next is not having an SUV or high clearance vehicle. Many of the roads in Capitol Reef are dirt roads. And a lot of these dirt roads are just fine in a car. Um, although I would always feel more comfortable in an SUV, but some of the roads really do take you to the back country and can get a little bumpy if you do not have a good high clearance vehicle. In fact, one of the roads we went on on the loop the fold yes when we drove loop the fold there was a portion of that high, of that road that we decided not to do in our sequoia because you know that's an suv it has four wheel drive but we know that sequoias are not jeeps so if you really want to do those kind of trails oh and there was that swing arm city mm -hmm. nearby that is totally for atvs and things like that so um make sure if you're if you have a choice on your rental car or if you're into ATVs and things like that, get a high clearance vehicle so you can access some of those more adventurous roads. Yeah, now we did see plenty of cars actually on these roads. So they, they went out and braved it. Some of these cars were like Subaru Outbacks, which I think are on a little bit higher. I think they have a little bit higher clearance. They're kind of made for, for that. So you could do it in something like that. Also, Cheryl mentioned the ATV thing. Just be aware. ATVs aren't allowed in the park, in the national park, they don't have ATVs. Some of these scenic roads though at Capitol Reef are kind of weird, like, so, like part of them are not in the park, part of them are in the park. It's a really long, narrow park, and so some of the roads are just outside. Um, but if you can get uh, an SUV for your rental, then we would recommend that so that you can do some of these cool really cool drives that we enjoy uh, okay our next thing is to skip the movie in the visitor center and go to the ranger program instead we're big fans actually of the visitor centers and the ranger programs at these national parks we really like going to these i always think that going to the visitor center gives you a really good overview of the park you get to talk to the ranger too that's pretty nice and then i think they usually do a really good job on their movies and their presentations and they help you understand the park this one was not our favorite, and so we would recommend you save the time there and then go to the ranger program. So they do a ranger program every day at three o'clock in the amphitheater in the campground. You do not need to be staying in the campground in order to go to it. In fact, they have a little parking lot right there that you can park and attend the ranger program. And she just did a great job. And it was really cool because we were sitting out there next to the walls and she was explaining what the layers were and how the, the geology works. And really having an understanding of the geology at Capitol Reef will give you a greater appreciation for the park. I think it always does that anyway, but I think here in particular, when you see that ground slanted and jutting out, having an understanding of how that happened and all that really, really helps out. And I have to say, like normally we're kind of the opposite where we always hit the movie and if someone were to tell me, let's go to a 30 minute talk about geology, I would say, peace out, I'll see you later. But this, the Rangers actually make this interesting. Mm -hmm. She really made it great. And it's the same one they give every day. So they have had lots of time to master their craft and teach an interesting geology lesson. Next mistake people make are not checking the website for current conditions. June, July, and August are flash flood seasons at Capitol Reef National Park. And as we've mentioned, many of these roads are dirt roads, which could make for some very interesting traveling if you are not prepared for it. So make sure you're aware of those things because they can happen quickly. And even if it's not a disaster of drowning, it could be a disaster of getting your car stuck. So 
check the website. Also, just to be aware of what type of construction is going on. Just make sure you, you are in the know of what's going on. Yeah, we're big fans of doing this anyway. We always tell people, check the park website first for all the most up-to-date information about what's going on with fires or uh, floods or anything like that, COVID. I mean, who knows what? So ch always check the park website. Our last thing is to be prepared with your vehicle. Uh, so what you want to do, because you're, you're really far out there, so make sure that you have enough gas, that you filled up on gas. As again, Torrey is 10 miles away, the city of Torrey, and you can fill up there before you head off into the park. But like, we were going on this big loop the fold drive, and I mean, there's no gas stations anywhere even close. And so you need to make sure that you're filled up on gas, make sure that you have you know, equipment to change your tire, that you have a spare tire and that you can change it if you need to. Um, make sure that you have water in your vehicle. Like on this one drive that we were on, if something had gone wrong and we were out there, it could be hours or even maybe a day before somebody sees you or comes out there to get you. I mean, you're out there all on your own for the most part. So just kind of be prepared and, and understand that you're pretty off the grid at Capitol Reef. By the way, there's no cell phone connection in the park. Um, there was no cell phone connection at all in the park, right? No. Uh, maybe sometimes when we get up on top of a peak, we'd get a little bit of a signal, but for the most part, no connection. You have to drive over to Torrey to get the connection, which is 10 miles away. If you are interested in learning more about Capitol Reef or you are actually planning a trip there, check out our playlist. It has all sorts of fun videos about Capitol Reef and other national parks in the West. Thank you for watching. Until next time, go West, young traveler.